even if it's across the screenery. Oh, it is? Oh. Better now, Jenna? in tandem with the overture, it's just, gosh, how brilliant of R and H. And, and this same, like, leap motif trickles into the rest of the musical. They're basically, uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein's, their objective was for each and every spectator to be transposed into riding the carousel horse, so I think they succeeded admirably. So as soon as this overture wraps up, we'll begin. I hope everyone's having a peaceful week and happiest April. show tunes uh, across the decades, across the board of decades, and I have a new repertoire this afternoon, 
and I'm just so pleased to present it to you. So without further ado, adieu, not adieu, do not the do. Here we are. self-titled from Pippin, Pippin the Prince. So this, this, his, his uh, th this was his kind of confession to find a purpose in his life. And it's very existential. So that was, that was his ballad. It's, it's so, uh, just very endearing. I trust the acoustics were behaving themselves. Alrighty, so on deck we have a little night music courtesy of Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> Isn't it rich 
trivia as well so I thought we could we could close with that in a little bitty so in the next selection oh, here we go this is also actually uh, rewinding back to Leonard Bernstein from from last Thursday, but a new selection of Leonard's today. Um. 
something due any day, I will know right away, soon as it shows. It may become cannonballing down the sky, gleaming its eye bright as a rose. It's only just out of reach, down the block, on a beach, under a tree. I got a feeling there's a miracle due, gonna come true, coming to me. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. If I can wait, something's coming, I don't know what it is, but it is gonna break. With a click, with a shock, phone will jingle, door will knock, open the latch. Something's coming, don't know when, but soon you catch the new one hand. Just by holding still, it'll be there. Come on, something, come on, then don't be shy. Meet a guy, pull up a chair. The air is humming, and something great is coming. Who knows? It's only just out of reach, down the block, on a beach, maybe tonight, maybe tonight, maybe tonight. Bernstein, lyricized by Stephen Sondheim. There you go. Something's coming from West Side Story, and kind of tragically, it would have. I mean, tragically, that Broadway is paralyzed right now because it would have very much. I think the revival would have still been showing right now. Alrighty, so next election is another ballad. Notice the pattern. Another ballad from a surprise musical. We actually didn't hear it last week, so I thought I'll treat us to it this week today. And we 
air gets colder When shadows cover the road I am following Will I be alone? There in the darkness No, not alone, not alone and I'll never be So that that selection that's that, that's actually my all time all galaxy favorite 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 show tune to ever exist. It's I find it to be so breathtaking. And it's two best buds duetting together, two fellows singing uh, and coping with each other's uh life obstacles and just uh really just cheerleading for each other. Okay, so I actually don't believe I introduced myself just for those of you who are tuning in for the first time ever. Lauren Kianesny, I'm a gerontologist and speaking of cheerleading, a cognitive cheerleader for our organization. Uh, always cheer cheerleading every day. Okay, the next selection. Also rewinding. Oh, and that, that ballad we just heard, that was You Walk With Me from the Full Monty musical. So the next selection, we're rewinding back actually quite a few decades back to Rodgers and Hammerstein land. So two selections from Carousel. Here's the first.
that that selection is from Carousel. It's a, also a, a really enchanting ballad between uh, Julie Jordan and Bill, her love, her love dub hub. Before we progress to the next tune, I thought let's squeeze in some Broadway trivia. Why not? So there were a couple from last Thursday I thought we could review. And uh, the first the first question, which actually Alan so beautifully answered, the TKTS booth has, which has been around since 1973. What does it offer, the TKTS booth, that's literally in the nucleus of Times Square? Discount theater tickets, free movie passes, specialty ice cream or horse and buggy rides, and yes, Alan, the answer was, is, was, is discount movie theater tickets. Discount theater tickets, rather. And uh, TDF actually owns, the Theater Development Fund owns TKTS. So if you're a member of TDF, most likely you could be granted tickets to TKTS. Well, it could save you uh, quite a bit of a schleppity over there. So the other question from last week, we were wondering... Leia and I were wondering, what was the last Broadway musical Rodgers and Hammerstein created starring Mary Martin? And it debuted in 1959. So their farewell musical debuted. That's funny. A farewell debuting. Oxymoron, anyone? Uh, but it's fascinating because... Rodgers and Hammerstein's Farewell was 1959 when subsequent contemporary composers didn't even exist yet. So it's just wild. And, and unbeknownst to r &H, my goodness, what a whole carousel of musicals that were about to be birthed. Uh, many of which we heard already today. So the answer, Sound of Music, was actually the departure musical for Rodgers and Hammerstein and coincidentally one of their most recognizable for always. I, I feel it really is actually if, if you ask most theater junkies or even if you're not necessarily a theater junkie, sound of music, ring a bell, yes very much so for many out of out of their whole out of Rodgers and Hammerstein's entire library. I think Sound of Music is definitely the most cliched mainstream. But it's it's still so lovable. And now on to today's trip. Oh, right, and then also from last Thursday, that's right, also which actress caused a sensation when she played Fanny Bryce in the 1964 musical Funny Girl, which is behind us, as I joked last week, your stage right. So, Mary Martin, Anne Bancroft, Edie Gourmet, or Barbara Streisand, and actually some of the, uh, some of our families answered Barbara Streisand, very, very much correct. Barbara Streisand not only starred in the musical Funny Girl, but she also starred in the motion picture Funny Girl. And she's still, her pipes are still piping today. So for, so that was a little review for today's Trivia, feel free to answer at any time, or answer next time, just, just why not for, for your library. So the very first for today, written especially for Judy Holliday, 
bells are ringing. I'll I'll just check comments. Just yeah, I apologize. There's a significant comment lag, so I may not be able to review or even see any comments until we you know conclude today for today. But uh, anyhow, no worries. A written especially for Judy Holiday, Bells Are Ringing, which opened at the Schubert Theater in 1956, included among its creative team these talented individuals. So did Bells Are Ringing, did that, what, so what, what trifecta of a team did it involve? Was it Agnes DeMille? DeMille? Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein? Was it Leonard Bernstein, Stephen Sondheim, and Hal Prince? Was it Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe? Lerner and Lowe? Not a law firm. Or was it Jerome, Rob Jerome Robbins, Betty Comden, and Adolf Green? So I'll, I'll allow everyone time to answer. And the next, this superstar never played the Palace Theater, which was considered the mecca of vaudeville performers during the 1910s, 20s, and early 1930s. Who was he? So he was very much, you could say, one of the pioneers of vaudevillian theater around the time that even Yiddish theater was, you know, very much. I guess you could say in like an embryonic stage. So was it Bob Hope? Was it Al Jolson? Was it Eddie Cantor or Milton Berle? So I'll give you folks and pals and families and friends time to answer that one. I'll give you a wee hint. Uh, the none of the above or below are still with us. And the next one, a helicopter was the unforgettable set piece of this musical, which opened in 1991. Was it Evita? Was it This is the Army? Was it Miss Saigon? Or was it Big Deal? So these are all existing musicals, but there was only out of these four somewhat contemporary musicals, the most, well, the most comfy answer, I guess, uh, featured a helicopter. A wee little hint, it revolved around the Vietnam War. And it took place in Saigon City. Vietnam. And next up, the groundbreaking musical Chicago opened in 1975, later revived in 1997. Did anyone happen to see the 1997 revival? It was fantastic. Pick the two stars who appeared in the original musical, original production, and the revival. So both 1975, they were on the playbill, and 1997. Was it Jerry Orbach and B.B. Newark? Was it Ben Vereen and Anne Reinking? Was it Mary Tyler Moore and Richard Gere? Was it Ted Danson, or was it Ted Danson and Sarah Jessica Parker? So it's the, the two co-starred in the 1975 production and 1997 arrangement of Chicago. And I'll give you time. Uh, if I guess if, if provided the com the comments are not lagging too much, maybe right before we close I'll I'll we'll uh, chat about the answers or I'll share the answers. Next up, what nineteen eighty nine Musical is performed without an intermission and directed and choreographed by Tommy Toon. Was it Grand Hotel, 
my one and only, all that jazz or nine. So I'll give you time while while everyone is brainstorming. Let's let's uh, chapter on to the next tune. Also, Carousellian.
parasol recording it it is the finale piece it sounds so final doesn't it it's really just so captivating uh, at that at that moment virtually in every production that ever played that ever existed uh, really not a parched eye in the audience for sure by that by that moment by that number so let's just see if I could reload the comments be right there BRB just to see if let's see Thanks so much for your patience. Thanks so much for your patience. Oh, there Oh, there we go. Everything's current now, I think. Oh, thanks a bunch, Laura. And Mandy and Jenna, thanks, thanks a bunch. That's so sweet. So, I don't know if, if Peter, our beloved Peter, is with us. Maybe you are. You might be, like, through osmosis. Uh, I have your Lion King request from last week. So here it is in the flesh, Peter. I'm sure you're giggling somewhere. But maybe you're here. Maybe, maybe you can hear it live. Here it is. Especially for Peter. He had requested, or Peter, you had requested Lion King last Thursday. Li a selection from the Lion King. The Broadway Lion King. Oh, 
computer especially for you. Any other requests before I divulge some additional trivia? Any requests? I welcome all requests and all musical requests. So, oh, right. So to answer in case any of these were a head scratcher. So bells are ringing. The creative team behind and the artistry behind it were Jerome Robbins, Betty Compton, Adolph Green. The uh, very, that was the composer team, very gifted composers. And Al Jolson actually it was the superstar that never ever played at the Palace Theater, uh, which, which is wild. And Miss Saigon was our answer for the, the helicopter musical, for lack of a, a more flowery description. In 1991, it was a tremendous hit. Tremendous. It was very much in competition with Les Mis. Because Les Mis was also just, I mean, it was just like the the it gal of musicals. It was, everyone fussed about it. I, I always remember very fondly between five summers back consecutive back-to-back -back, all the kids were sporting the Les Mis tees so it was a similar fad for Miss Saigon as far as just like the movement of fandom so and then Jerry Orbach and B.B. Neuwirth they co-starred in both 1975 Chicago and 1997 Jerry Orbach from Law and Order who'd have thunk it and Grand Hotel, that was the 1989 musical that was performed without any intermission and choreographed by Tommy Toon. I think to this day it's actually pretty much the only musical performed without an intermission. So uh, God bless everyone's bladders back then, I guess. So, and then in answer to... Oh, yes, to... So this is really neat. So the Music Box Theater was built to showcase the Irving Berlin, that was the, the answer, the owner's reviews uh, in the Prohibition era in the 1920s. So it was Ir Irving Berlin uh, and also in competition, I guess you could say, with the Schubert Theater. The next, so, oh! So we have four, four more, we have four more trivia cues. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the 1960 Learner and Low, speaking of, musical about the mythical king and queen of Camelot starred which pair of actors? Was it Richard Harris and Vanessa Redgrave? Richard Harris, decades later, uh, and uh, decided, well, I guess he decided, ended up being casted in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I think Harry Potter, too, I think. Pretty, pretty fascinating. Re very, uh, just very versatile actor. Was it Nicole Williamson? Nicole, pardon, Nicole. Or Nicole with the silent E. And Penny Fuller, was it Peter O'Toole and Katherine Hepburn? Or was it Richard Burden and Julie Andrews? This, these are the two stars, the King and Queen of Camelot, 1960 Camelot. And the next cue, query. Ah, this is for the, I guess, well, and, and really all generations, I think, have appreciated these two musicals. That they really actually touch at every every age gamut. Which of these original cast members from Wicked made their Broadway debut in the musical Rent? Was it Kristen Chenoweth, Adina Menzel, Joel Grey, 
or Nobert Leo Butz. And the next, the first, next and second to last, the first song in the original production of Cabaret opens with which of these lines? Come to the cabaret, hey big spender, come on babe, or welcome and bienvenue. And our finale trivia cue, the producers of Avenue Q chose to not have the show tour the country, but instead tried luck playing in only one other city, which is it? Is it Atlantic City? Is it Vegas Baby Vegas? Los Angeles or Chicago? Any uh, any thoughts? Well next week we'll review all of the above, all 15 questions. So if if there aren't any requests at the moam, I will bid you adieu, bid you all adieu. Thank you so kindly for tuning in, and I thoroughly look forward to next week, and I hope everyone has an opportunity to afford themselves some sunshine today. It's uh, quite delicious outside. So thanks a bunch again. And party on Wayne, party on Garth.